When you think of the places that are most prominent when it comes to theme parks, you'd most likely be thinking about the USA, Europe, maybe China, Japan, or even Australia. But a major region that is filled with some world-class coasters that is overlooked by a lot of people is the Middle East. Overall, countries there have been doing a lot to increase tourism recently, and as a result, their theme parks have been getting a lot of attention with constant investment. Despite this, their amazing coasters aren't the topic of discussion very often amongst enthusiasts, and it leads to many people not really having an idea of what this region has to offer coaster-wise. In the past 10 years, countries across the Middle East have opened tons of theme parks, water parks, and entertainment resorts in an effort to increase tourism. This idea has gotten bigger and bigger as of late, with countries like the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia allocating billions of dollars to develop leisure destinations. A lot of these projects have already opened, but even more are currently underway. And the biggest one of these, which is under construction right now, could become the greatest theme park of all time, if it ever opens. So forget America and Europe, let's take a journey to the Middle East to explore what is going on here and discover the incredible rise and possible demise of Middle Eastern theme parks. Before we get into the future and expansion of the Middle Eastern amusement industry, let's take a look at what they already have. There are 17 countries in the Middle East and many of them are very lacking when it comes to theme parks. In fact, only a handful of those countries have a decent coaster collection. Nations like Bahrain, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Oman, Palestine, Syria, and Yemen have next to nothing, which makes sense because they're all small countries and not exactly known for their entertainment. Cyprus, Egypt, and Israel all have a few extreme coasters like Zyklons and Boomerang scattered throughout their respective areas, but none of them have any great rides or parks. Iran is a country with many alpine coasters by weekend. Aram Park, though, is the biggest theme park in the country and is home to six modest roller coasters as well as some cool flat rides like a Starflyer and Drop Tower. Iraq has some low-quality extreme rides such as an SLC and some stuff by lesser-known manufacturers. The country's best coaster, however, is one that I had never heard of. This is Dream Coaster at Dream City, and it's a Mauer X car that's a clone of the now defunct G Force at Drayton Manor. Dream Coaster has a weird vertical lift hill that inverts the world's only bent Cuban 8 inversion and some turns before the short experience ends. It's a unique ride for Mauer, but definitely isn't a coaster worth traveling for. Qatar only has a few parks across the country, but one ride really stands out there. Epic Coaster is the world's tallest indoor roller coaster. It's a premier ride's launch coaster with a backward spike that's 196 feet tall. Unfortunately, the rest of the layout isn't great. It's got a couple inversions, but nothing super special. Epic Coaster is located at Doha Quest, which is a park located in the Doha Oasis Mall. Lusail Winter Wonderland is a seasonal amusement park on Al Maha Island, an entertainment resort in Lusail, Qatar. Both the Doha Oasis Mall and Al Maha Island are examples of leisure complexes that have been funded by the government in order to bring more tourists in, and we'll see a lot more of those as this video progresses. Lusail Winter Wonderland had its first season this past winter and operated with four coasters and a bunch of flat rides. Uridu 5G is their standout coaster, built by IE Park and featuring a loop. Saudi Arabia has the second most coasters in the region. These are mostly family oriented, and the high quantity is partly due to the 20 parks in the country called Sparkies. Recently though, there have been some extreme coasters popping up. Atala Happy Land is home to an intimate surf rider, there's a Vekoma Boomerang at Al Shalal Theme Park, another IE loop coaster at one of the many Sparkies in the country, a PAX looper called Cobra, and two other thrilling coasters which are traveling rides that go from park to park. Sky Loop is a premier Skyrocket 2 that operated at Riyadh Winter Wonderland during its season this past winter, and now runs at BLVD World. The other major traveling coaster is Energizer, which operated at Jeddah Pier, then at Lusail Winter Wonderland for the winter, and now is back at Jeddah Pier. This is a Sartori Rides Nova coaster, the same model and a very similar ride to Cobra at Tivoli Frahiden in Denmark that was removed due to an unfortunate accident last year. But by far, the two biggest countries in the Middle East when it comes to theme parks are Turkey and the United Arab Emirates. Turkey is home to some great parks, as well as three of the best coasters in the entire region. Aktur Park is a nicely themed small park that I hadn't heard of before. It's got some good flats and might be worth a visit if you're in the Antalya area. One of the reasons you would be there is for the Land of Legends theme park. Many people know about this place because of their Mock Rides Hypercoaster, aptly named Hypercoaster, but this park is much more than just one ride. It has a solid supporting lineup of coasters and flat rides, but what really blows me away here is the theming. I mean, just look at this. This is something you'd see at a top tier theme park, and I think Land of Legends is a place more people should be aware of. Nefeskesen is an Intamin launch coaster at Via Land in Istanbul. This ride definitely has a good layout and definitely is one of the best coasters in the country. 
The land itself, previously known as Isfanbul, seems to be a pretty good park with a really nice view of the city below. It's got decent theming and a good supporting cast of flats and a few dark rides, but the main reason to go here would be Nefeskesen. There's another red Intamin launch coaster just 45 minutes away. Redfire, located at Corsa Nadasi, is a clone of iSpeed at Mirabilandia. I loved iSpeed and this ride fixes its biggest problem, restraints. Whereas iSpeed has hard over the shoulder restraints that many have reported cause head banging, Redfire runs with lap bars which would only improve the experience. Corsa Nadasi seems like a decent enough park. The theming isn't great but there's plenty of other rides there besides just Redfire. In the early 2010s, the mayor of Ankara, Turkey, had a vision to create one of the biggest theme parks in the world in order to make Ankara a tourist destination. The park would be called Anka Park and would be home to 17 roller coasters and more than 2,000 total attractions. However, it faced lots of problems during construction like varying political agendas, a name change to Wonderland Eurasia, and the fact that it was built on land that was only allowed to be used for farming. Despite all that, the park eventually opened, but it did so way behind schedule in 2019 and was a big failure. It didn't draw in nearly as many people as operators had hoped, and after not making enough money to stay afloat, Wonderland Eurasia closed less than a year after it fully opened. This is a prime example of a park whose reach exceeded its grasp, and was never really going to be a success in the first place. It focused much more on quantity than quality, with its best coaster being an Intamin 10 inversion coaster, and serves as a warning to other properties not to do too much attractions-wise before it's even open. But as we'll see later, that didn't stop other developers from trying to do the same thing, and getting the same result. Something I wanted to touch on really quick is that the whole government-funded massive theme park idea doesn't always fail. Energylandia is a great example of a place that received tons of money in order to draw in tourists that expanded into one of the biggest theme parks in the world. As the park grew, they began to pay more attention to theming and it looks like a great place to visit. I'm actually going there in like two days as of the time I'm recording this, so I'll just flash my brief thoughts up on the screen regarding Energylandia when I'm editing. Now let's talk about the United Arab Emirates. This is currently the best country in the Middle East for theme parks due to its expanding tourist market around major cities like Dubai and Abu Dhabi. There have been some massive projects intended for the area, some of which are fully operating and others that have crashed and burned. You're likely familiar with Ferrari World, and it's probably the park that comes to mind for you when I'm talking about the UAE. But while that park is the best collection of coasters in the entire Middle East, the best park is located right across the street. I'm talking about Warner Brothers World Abu Dhabi, the world's largest indoor theme park with a plethora of amazing rides and fantastic theming. I'm going to be honest, I didn't know much about this place beforehand. It only has two roller coasters, both family oriented, but like I said, this park shines with its dark rides. They have a Forbidden Journey style Batman themed ride, a dark ride slash log flume hybrid themed to the Flintstones, a trackless Scooby Doo dark ride with more amazing theming, whatever this park builds they theme it to the absolute best of their abilities. The two coasters are Fast and Furious, an Intamin family suspended coaster, and Tom and Jerry Swiss Cheese Spin, a Zamperla twister coaster. The park's home to a couple large-scale flat rides as well. They have Zamperla Air Race themed to Scarecrow and a Riddler themed Zamperla Disco. Warner Brothers World Abu Dhabi is a great example of a park that takes DC IPs and makes the most out of them, crafting well-themed experiences with characters that lots of people know and love. Do better Six Flags. But I'm not done with all the great rides at this park. In addition, they have a Green Lantern themed flying theater, a Looney Tunes trackless shooting dark ride, a Justice League 3D dark ride with the same system as Spider-Man at Islands of Adventure, a Joker themed creepy funhouse, and many other smaller attractions that look to provide a fun experience. The park itself looks great as well. Being located indoors allows the areas themselves to have great theming too. Something I particularly like is how they use lighting to capture the essence of an area and give each section its own special feel. Warner Brothers World Abu Dhabi needs to be talked about more. It looks to have an elite collection of dark rides, and if you're a fan of that ride type as well as amazing theming, make sure to visit this park if you're in the area. But Ferrari World, without a doubt, is home to the best coasters in the country. Formula Rosa and Flying Aces are the park's two standouts. Formula Rosa is the fastest coaster in the world and features a super long layout, and Flying Aces is an intimate hyper similar to Skyrush, but this one has a non-inverting loop and a heartline roll. Mission Ferrari finally opened this past year and looks to be one of the better themed coasters out there. It's an SFX coaster by Dynamic Attractions and includes dark ride sections, launches, and inversions. Turbo Track is the park's tallest ride. It's an intimate shuttle coaster that launches you up and out of the building. Fiorano GT Challenge, a dueling launch coaster, and Formula Rosa Jr. round out this park's great coaster lineup. 
In terms of the park itself, it's located indoors and has some nice Ferrari theming that is prevalent throughout. The major roller coasters are located outside, but in addition to those, Ferrari World has a pretty good collection of Ferrari themed dark rides. This is a park that'd be worth going to just for its top two, but I'm sure the rest of it wouldn't disappoint. The last major park in Abu Dhabi is currently under construction. This is SeaWorld Abu Dhabi, which will be operated by SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment. This park will be mostly indoors, feature the world's largest aquarium, and open with two roller coasters. Manta is an intimate triple launch coaster that seems pretty similar to Cheetah Hunt. There's no actual POV, and I couldn't find very much footage of the ride itself, but according to the park, it'll have 17 airtime moments and the world's first zero-g flip-out. The park itself looks very immersive with its animal exhibits and other sea-themed experiences. It opens on May 23rd of this year. Warner Brothers World Abu Dhabi, Ferrari World, and SeaWorld Abu Dhabi are all located within 10 minutes of each other, and that's because they're all part of a huge entertainment resort called Yas Island. This artificial island opened in 2010 and is currently home to those three parks, as well as a water park, hotels, restaurants, a beach, marina, arena, racing circuit, and more. It was built at a cost of upwards of 40 billion US dollars, funded by Alder Properties in alignment with the UAE's vision to increase tourism, and attracts tens of millions of visitors each year. This is an example of something that's been very common in the Dubai Abu Dhabi area in the past 10 years and has now expanded to other Middle Eastern countries, mega projects and resorts. The idea behind these huge projects is to decrease the region's reliance on oil and instead focus on other industries like tourism. These resorts are built to draw people in from all over the world and work in alignment with the country's major airlines to do one thing, bring people to the area. An hour away in Dubai, development for an even more massive collection of resorts was underway. The city of Dubai had a vision to become the world's leading theme park destination, attempting to dethrone Orlando. As part of this plan, they would begin to design Dubai Land, a massive collection of huge theme parks built by some of the world's leading park operators like Six Flags, Universal, and eventually Disney, and it would feature some of the most popular IPs in the world. And the resort wouldn't just be made up of theme parks. Containing zones like sports venues, ecotourism projects, hotels, and more, Dubai Land was set to be spread across over 68,000 acres or 280 square kilometers. This project was to cost over 64 billion US dollars and, if all went according to plan, would be the largest theme park resort the world had ever seen. Nevertheless, this did not come to fruition. Financial problems led to companies dropping out and eventually the project was completely abandoned. The world's biggest theme park resort, Dubai Land, never really got off the ground. However, the Six Flags Park that was supposed to go to the resort was revitalized and was intended to be brought to another major theme park resort in the area, Dubai Parks and Resorts. Yet again, this fell through due to the independent companies not being able to make payments to Six Flags. Dubai Parks and Resorts did open though. It's home to three parks, which are Motion Gate, Legoland Dubai, which was originally intended for Dubai Land, and Bollywood Parks Dubai. But despite the ambitious plans for this resort, none of the parks were as big or successful as they had been intended to be. Motion Gate looks to be the best park there. It's got several movie themed lands with attractions themed to the properties of DreamWorks, Columbia Pictures, and Lionsgate. Their standout coasters include Capital Bullet Train, a Hunger Games themed Mack Rides launch coaster, Madagascar Mad Pursuit, a launch Gerslauer Infinity coaster, John Wick Open Contract, an SNS 40 free spin, as well as some other smaller coasters like a Mauer Spinner, Gerslauer Bobsled, a very well done mock inverted powered coaster, and a Gerslauer Junior coaster. Everything has nice theming, especially in the DreamWorks section. There's some dark rides and flats there as well, and overall Motion Gate looks like a very solid park. The same can't really be said about the other two parks at the resort. Legoland Dubai is fine, I guess. The Miniland there looks great, but the rest of the place is missing something. It's small compared to the other Legoland parks around the world, and unless this sees some more investment, it'll be nothing more than a place you just spend a few hours at. Bollywood Parks Dubai is really lacking when it comes to things to do. Aside from the world's tallest star flyer, the only other attractions are lackluster kids rides and a bunch of simulators and 4D theaters. The theming in the different lands looks okay, but again, this park's been open for seven years and hasn't seen much investment. However, they do have a GCI under construction called Bombay Express that might help bring crowds to a failing park. What you just heard about Bollywood Parks Dubai is what I wrote literally 10 minutes before it was announced that this park would be permanently closing. I can't believe the timing. Like I said, this park was significantly weaker than its original plan suggested, which is a trend of this resort as well as many others. It will not be missed by many. What's interesting about this closure though is that there are three major roller coasters on site. Like I said, Bombay Express is fully constructed, testing, and was scheduled to open this year. Obviously that won't happen, so I wonder if it'll be relocated to another park in the resort, the world, or just won't open at all. 
The same question can be asked about the two mock rides coasters on site. These are a hyper coaster and a power splash that were originally intended to go to Six Flags Dubai Land and then Six Flags Dubai. Dubai Parks and Resorts still has these pieces, but they're just laying around on property. Motion Gates and Indoor Park and Legoland wouldn't get anything of that scale, so the likely option is that they'll be sold to another park if something does end up happening to them. There's an unofficial report that the Mach Hyper was sold to another park in the Middle East, but nothing's been confirmed. There are some other big parks in the UAE which are each part of, you guessed it, a large entertainment venue. IMG Worlds of Adventure is part of the city of Arabia, which was intended to be a massive leisure complex located near Dubai Land. The two projects kind of crashed simultaneously, and now one of the only operating parts of the city of Arabia is IMG Worlds of Adventure. The rest of the project seems to be dead in the water. The theme park itself looks pretty good. It has four major themed areas, which are Lost Valley, themed to dinosaurs, the Marvel superhero area, a land themed to Cartoon Network properties, and the main entrance area. This park is home to three roller coasters, which are a Gerslauer Eurofighter called Predator, a Blue Fire clone named Velociraptor, and Spider-Man Doc Ock's Revenge, a highly themed mock spinner. In terms of other attractions, IMG Worlds of Adventure has a ride very similar to Dinosaur at Animal Kingdom, an Avengers-themed 3D dark ride, and some other cool stuff. Storm Coaster is located at the Dubai Hills Mall. This ride, built by Intamin, is similar to the Polar Coaster concept that was rumored for a while, albeit on a much smaller scale. Storm Coaster features a vertical launch and navigates a layout that spends most of its time off the ground due to the limited space, which results in a very unique experience. The mall that it's in opened just last year at a cost of over 400 million US dollars and spans nearly 46 acres, or 186,000 square meters. So that's everything that the Middle East has to offer in terms of coasters for now. But like I said, this region and the Gulf states in particular are going all in on developing these mega projects in order to draw in tourists, which will result in a lot of investment in their theme park industry. This obviously isn't limited to just theme parks though. The reason why these countries are going crazy with these projects is because they need a new industry to excel in. For the past few decades, the Gulf states have relied on oil as their primary source of revenue but oil will eventually run out and it's now being replaced with cleaner energy in many parts of the world. This is why these countries are turning to other industries like tourism to generate revenue for themselves. Dubai is an example of a city that's done a great job turning its economy around. There's still a lot more progress to be made, but it's invested heavily in modernization. Dubai is now a major international hub for business, recreation, and technology. Despite many failures with individual projects, it seems like whatever the UAE was intending to do with Dubai has succeeded, even if it's not quite up to what they hoped it would be. Now other countries in the area are trying to do the same thing. Saudi Arabia is arguably the biggest example of this. Saudi Vision 2030 is an incredibly ambitious plan from the government to transform Saudi Arabia from a nation whose economy is largely dependent on oil into one that's diversified. They'll invest over 1 trillion US dollars into developing the country's health, education, infrastructure, recreation, and tourism. Saudi Vision 2030 is the driving force behind many ongoing and upcoming projects like the Line and Jeddah Tower, which you might have heard of. Some of these projects are pretty much dead in the water, but the Saudi government is continuing to pour money into other ideas. Unfortunately, with the development of buildings and land, labor is a much-needed force. It's terrible what some of these countries have done to migrant workers from Asia through the kafala system, and there's absolutely no excuse for the awful conditions these people have to go through. By spreading awareness, we can increase many people's understanding of the situation and hopefully help abolish this terrible practice as a whole. Going back to the Saudi mega projects, there's one that's particularly interesting for me and a lot of other enthusiasts. Kidiya is an entertainment project that'll be located just outside of Riyadh. This will be a fully functioning city, also featuring theme parks, water parks, resorts, sports arenas, nature trails, and a bunch of other stuff. Kidiya is funded by the Saudi Public Investment Fund and is intended to become the largest tourism destination in the world by 2030, with 334 square kilometers or 129 square miles of land. It's obviously up in the air whether or not this will come to fruition due to the massive scale of Kidiya and the very real possibility of it being yet another failed Middle Eastern mega project. Construction was delayed due to a certain disease and it's now well behind schedule. The reason why I've brought up Kidiya in this video, and you probably know this already, is because of Six Flags Kidiya. This enormous theme park will cost 1 billion US dollars to build and if it opens will be one of the biggest theme parks in the world. There's a ton of concept art and official documents for the park which depict thrilling roller coasters and an immersive atmosphere. 
The headlining attraction at this brand new theme park will be Falcon's Flight, which is set to be the world's tallest, fastest, and longest roller coaster. I think we all remember seeing the original animation for this ride and laughing due to the fact that it literally defies gravity. A lot of people, including me, brushed this project aside when it was first announced. When I saw the news, I remember thinking, yeah right, that'll never happen. But now, three years later, Six Flags Cadilla is still very much alive and track has actually been installed on Falcon's Flight. New developments and documents have just been released by the Cadilla Investment Company that give us a lot more insight into the details of the park. In this document, it is stated that Falcon's Flight will be 185 meters or 607 feet tall. In another part of the document, though, it's said that Falcon Flight will be over 200 meters or 656 feet tall. I'm not sure which one is right because the park literally contradicts themselves in the same document, so I guess we'll just have to see. Things that have been confirmed about Falcon's Flight is that it will be built by Intamin, it'll reach speeds of over 250 kilometers per hour or 155 miles per hour, and will feature over 4,000 meters or 13,000 feet of track, making it the tallest, fastest, and longest roller coaster in the world. Going more into the specifics of Six Flags Cadilla, it'll have six themed areas around an indoor central hub. I'm not going to go into all the details about this park because that'd take like 30 minutes, but I'll link some videos down in the description that do that instead. What I will do is give a brief overview of some of their major attractions. The park will also be home to the Colossus, which is described as a gravity-driven wood-steel hybrid coaster, so an RMC hybrid. It'll be the first RMC since Lightning Rod to feature a launched lift hill, if the documents are correct, and will go through 30 airtime moments along just 800 meters or 2600 feet of track. That's really weird considering that Untamed, which is the coaster I've been on with the greatest quantity of airtime, has 22 moments of airtime along 3,500 feet or 1,000 meters of track. Colossus will be a ride focused almost exclusively on airtime, and I guess we'll see how that turns out. Another major coaster is Iron Rattler Mine Train, which is neither related to Iron Rattler nor a mine train. It's a Vacoma tilt coaster in the Steamtown area of the park and is supposed to have some really detailed theming. According to the official documents, which I'll link in the description, this ride will be 60 meters or 196 feet tall. They'll also have the world's tallest freestanding drop tower with Sirocco Tower, which is set to stand 145 meters or 475 feet tall, and Spitfire, which will be the world's tallest triple launch coaster. That means it'll be taller than Soaring with Dragon, which is the current record holder, and it stands 197 feet or 60 meters tall. The ride looks to have a massive inverted top hat and some other elements during its relatively short layout. Like I said, there's many other rides that'll go to this park, but I decided not to go into too much detail since this video is already pretty long as it is. To finish up, I'm going to answer a question that could determine the fate of the entire Middle Eastern amusement industry. Will Six Flags Cadilla open? Will it be successful? And will it pave the way for more theme park related Middle Eastern mega projects in the future? To answer that question, we need to take a look at something really important that I haven't touched on, the heat. Temperatures in the UAE and Saudi Arabia can get up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 49 degrees Celsius in the summer months. That's the reason why most of the area's successful theme parks are indoors. If you look at most of the parks I talked about earlier, they're all inside. Ferrari World, Warner Brothers World, Motion Gate, the upcoming SeaWorld Park, and all the malls are inside. And when you look at the parks that haven't been seeing attention and investment, they're outside. Bollywood Parks Dubai, Legoland Dubai, and the failed Dubai Land parks were outside in the scorching heat. And Six Flags Cadilla will be outside, mostly. From the documents that have been released, the park seems to be making some efforts to negate the undesirable temperatures. Like I mentioned earlier, the Citadel will be the park's central hub, located fully indoors and featuring restaurants, shops, and other things to do. Each land will have shaded areas as well as water fountains, but there's only so much you can do to reduce the effects of heat when your park is located in one of the hottest places on Earth. Something else that's a concern is the fact that Six Flags' previous two Middle Eastern projects did not come to fruition. But there's a difference between Kadia and the Dubai parks. Six Flags Kadia is being fully funded by the Saudi Public Investment Fund, whereas Six Flags Dubai Land and Dubai required independent companies to help finance and make payments to Six Flags. Eventually, they failed to pay on time, so Six Flags terminated the agreement. The Public Investment Fund is regulated and controlled by the Saudi government and is what is funding all of the mega projects in the country. If Saudi Arabia is really serious about making Kadia happen, they'll get it done, no matter the cost. But even if Six Flags Kadia is completed, I doubt it'll be as complete as the concept art makes it out to be. I know many people will point to Six Flags and say, oh, it's Six Flags, they're not going to theme anything. Well, despite the name, Six Flags will not own the park and it will only be a partial operator. This is much more a Saudi Arabian project than it is a Six Flags one. 
Despite that, judging from what we've seen from these massive entertainment resorts before, it's probably just going to be a collection of record-breaking rides and not an amazingly themed immersive experience like the concept art makes it out to be. Which brings me to this. If the park does open, how many people are going to make the thousand mile, thousand dollar journey to visit it? Saudi Arabia is trying to make strides to increase tourism, but let's be honest, 120 degree heat in the middle of the desert doesn't exactly screen vacation destination. Add to that the country's intolerance for homosexuals and other groups, and well, this isn't a place where I can see many people bringing their families for vacation. What I personally see happening is that Six Flags Kadia fully opens in around 2027 with all of its major rides and maybe missing a few smaller attractions that were planned for the park. But the theming and overall quality isn't there and as a result attendance isn't anywhere near the level the park had hoped. It was a great idea on paper but there are so many factors that go into the possible prosperity of a property and while it would be really cool if Kadia is a success, I don't see that happening. As of now, the Middle East is home to many great theme parks and roller coasters that are must-do experiences if you're in the area, but they're trying to expand at too rapid a pace, which I believe will lead to more failed mega projects like Dubai Land. Kadia is a great example of a country pouring money into a resort in hopes of it attracting tourists that just won't work out the way they think it will, at least from my point of view. The Gulf states are extremely ambitious with their future plans, but they're taking a ton of miscalculated risks and it seems that their reach will continue to exceed their grasp. Due to many factors, it just doesn't look like these huge projects, theme parks included, will be worth the return on investment. But hey, I could be wrong. Six Flags Kadia could open as one of the best theme parks in the world, drawing in millions of visitors from all around the globe. It could be a resounding success if all goes according to plan. And if that does happen, it'll give the green light for Saudi Arabia and other countries to advance with future projects in the same style, possibly even bigger than Kadia is. And if that does happen, the world of Middle Eastern theme parks will go from an underrated collection of great attractions to one of, if not the biggest, amusement destinations in the world. But like I said, I doubt that'll be the case.